Welcome back to another video. My name is Derek and today we're going to be taking a look into some of the basics of micro soldering so that those of you that are looking to get into that part of the repair space can have a much better idea of how the mechanics behind actually soldering things work. So let's get into the video. One of the products that I'm going to be featuring in this video is this new microscope LED LED fume extractor. So I'm excited to show you this and get into the basics. Let's get started. All right, let's start with some basics here. Here I've got some solder wire. This is a 6337. It's a flux core, which means there's a small bead of flux running through the middle. Here we've got some battery lead for tack welding batteries. So it does accept solder. However, this demonstration should show you how solder tends to work in general. Okay, so flux core means that it does have a small amount of flux. When I touch it to this, the flux will help it bond to the metal. However, that is only for a short period of time. So let's, let me show you what I mean. If we go like this, there's a small chance we get it to stick down, right? Now that's solid, that's on there, that isn't going anywhere. It's already cooled down to the touch. If I take my fingernail and I try to push on it, it's not gonna pop off, okay? Now if I take the same solder and we put it on the tip, you see all that smoke? That's the flux burning off. Now, if I let this sit here, all of the flux is now gone. If I try to put it on the metal, nothing happens. It doesn't want to stick. Look at this, it's just, I can go back to the original one and it's gonna clump up with it, but it's not gonna be able to spread further than we originally had it, because there's no more flux. It's all burnt away, all that smoke that you saw was it burning away. However, if we take something like flux and we draw a little path of flux like this, what should happen is when we heat it up with the iron, it'll actually flow all the way where the flux spreads to, just like that. Right. So anywhere the flux goes, it's come out a little bit of ways. If I keep heating this up, the solder will travel wherever the flux is. But as soon as you get past that barrier where there's no more flux, look, it doesn't travel at all. That's why solder paste is so useful in so many different scenarios. So if I take a little bit of solder paste and I put it out there, when it decides to melt, it automatically will bond to where it was because it has flux already in it. But again, without additional flux, I can't spread it further than we originally applied it. Not all flux is created equal, however. So if I take a little bit of this, it's called a oxidation point quick repair paste, and we solder using it. Look at how it spreads super clean, super fast, super compared to the other ones. I can add this flux here and we can try to spread this solder there and it will spread, but it's not spreading as fast or as clean as this other one where you can still see, look how shiny it still remains. Now it's shiny because Flux acts as a shield from oxidation. And here you can see that works. Now let's put our little fan to the test here. See there's a little button here on the side for the LED light. It gets brighter, brighter. So there's four different settings of brightness. And we can turn on the fan. And let's see how uh, it goes. There's four different settings as well. It's pretty loud. You can't even see the smoke. The smoke is sucked so fast into it that you can barely even see it. Let's try this again. You can see, got plenty of smoke. We turn it on instantly. Let's turn that light off. You just see it suck up the fumes so easily. It's pretty cool. I'm about five inches away now, and it's still able to redirect all of that smoke. Now I'm about six inches away. It's picking up a lot of it, not all of it. Let's turn it up. All right, at its highest, and I'm about seven inches away. It's pulling all of the smoke. None of it's none of it is escaping. That's pretty cool for such a little unit. And it's really bright. I don't know if the camera does it justice, but that's really bright. Oh, and it goes even brighter. So yeah, that's that's really bright. The camera probably doesn't do it justice, but needless to say, this worked pretty flawlessly. All right, so to continue real quick with some more basics, 
we're going to take a look at some wick. A wick is very interesting. Wick is just a braided copper wire. So if we take some braided copper wire, this is a, a brand of, of wick that I like, Goot Wick. There's also some other ones like Chemtronics and uh, a few other good ones out there. This is the 1.5 millimeter width. It comes in about four, comes at about five feet roughly of, uh, of, of length. So it does last you a long time if you're, if you're wise with using it. But it too also needs flux. Okay, so I'm gonna put some flux down on here. We'll get out our iron and what'll happen is the flux will kind of get into the fibers of the the wick and it'll help persuade the solder to leach off of the uh, the surface here and jump into the wick itself. That way I remove all of the solder even though it's going to leave behind some basically residue of solder it's no longer there's no longer really solder in anywhere besides right here. Now if I try to use wick, let me cut off the small section here. If I try to use wick without flux, in fact, let me just clean off any potential flux that's still on here. And I try to wick up the solder, it's not going to be that effective. So there's no solder in this part of the braid. And if I come down, it may be able to suck up some, but it's gonna struggle it did get some on there, but it really only sucked up where I had it. Whereas this one, it pulled in, it basically pulled in the solder from all sides. So flux is really important, as you can tell. Flux makes a world of difference when soldering. I guess what I'm trying to say is, when it comes to micro-soldering, having the proper components to the entire process makes a world of difference. And if you're running into things when you're soldering, like bridging between two components, or to pins or to legs or whatever you're soldering, the solution most likely is going to be flux. Flux is your best friend when it comes to solder work. And having something like this, I mean, let's see, let's see the brightness here, getting brighter, getting brighter. Look at how bright that gets. And the fan is extremely powerful. It does get pretty loud, but for a long saver, I think it's definitely <laughs> a good idea to have even if it is just a mini one like that. So hopefully I was able to shed some light on the kind of the mechanics behind soldering. You can't really have any bond without flux. The flux also acts as kind of a shield to prevent oxidation from occurring. Now of course when you're heating something up as the flux burns away because it will eventually all burn away you will start to get oxidation and wherever the flux was basically is the only place that that solder can go. Solder will only really flow where the flux is. It can't really go beyond that. There's nothing that's going to allow it to make that mechanical bond into the little grooves on the microscopic level on the metal. So, so it's convenient to have different types of solder. Solder that's already infused in flux. That's why I prefer to use solder paste in so many different applications instead of using a flux core wire or even just a solder wire in general having to add additional flux all the time. Now flux will always be wanted, you'll always want to add flux to basically any project that you're working on because it makes a world of difference when trying to get a clean solder joint that is effective, efficient, and also looks good. So. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If there's something that you'd like to see in a future video or have clarification on, let me know as well. Hopefully you enjoyed this small little section of a, basically a micro soldering 101. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.